Listening to Kendrick Lamar can be exhausting. <laughs> yeah, 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 this shit's work. Uh, and I just wasn't, I just wasn't in the space to do that shit this weekend. Uh, and this is probably what, like, this song. I'm not gonna hold you. I, I probably heard all of maybe eight bars out of this entire track because I was just grooving in my head. This is probably one of the funnest Kendrick songs I've heard in a very long time. So I wish I would have heard this shit over. Yeah. Individually, what I what I do is uh, the path for me, like to write what, I, what, what I'm tapping into in order to make my light shine. Focus on what make your light shine. <laughs> and just use me as an example because I'm doing it. That's all I want. To be weak and not like beat them down. I think it'll be so much more healing within themselves. If we give black men space to cry, if we give black men space to vent, if we give black men space to say, hey, I got daddy issues and I may be tripping, I may be going crazy, but it's because I have not been able to express myself. It'll be a lot of healing in the black community for sure. Especially towards the end when he said, you know, give women a break. Our black women have been strong for a long time. And they have held it down for a long time, but it's time for black men to say to themselves, I need the healing that I need. I need to go and um, speak with my father. Like I have pulled up on my dad. Like, uh, you had me, you ain't gonna treat me any other way because whatever you don't agree with about my lifestyle, you're gonna love me. And I need the love from you because it's gonna help me love others and it's gonna help me love myself. And you are my ge genealogy like i come from you i need to understand who i am because i'm a piece of you so if you have father issues go like pull up on your daddy like tell him like you ain't got no choice but to see me i'm pulling up what's up because it's needed it's necessary and black women congratulations to y'all for being so strong for so many years y'all break is coming okay <laughs>
I keep thinking is that producer, like London on the track, because then Summer Walker's on the other song, and he's talking about like family and how like she's not fucking with him right now. Like, so like this song to me felt like a uh, take me back, I'll work, and I hope it's not like uh, I hope I have time to make something work. But, like it gave me hope because of me. It wasn't like a I'm forcing you to or just take me back idly. Like I have to do. My relationship with my music was very, I guess, singular and very personal because it was the artist's voice, the artist's music, and me and my ears and my, you know, impression of the music. And I would sit probably for hours listening to music, doing whatever I was doing, but it was a very personal relationship. And today... We have access to more music. I have access to more music. Well, we all have access to more music. At the download, at, you know, in, in seconds, we can access all anyone's music. It doesn't mean that we're going to sit and, you know, listen to that music, listen to an album over and over again. I think we're we're going to uh, gravitate toward what sounds good what we like immediately, and then cast out the rest. I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's just the difference. So as far as time goes, when I was younger, there were, I spent a lot of time listening to music. As I've, gone, become, as I've grown older, um, I am selective about which music I, I spend my time listening to. This new Kendrick Lamar album is one that I have, I became aware of only because of the, the recent uh, messages, Instagram posts and, and, what, and what have you. And then my cousin Carlos, um, you know, shared the information um, with me, he said, hey, you know, Kendrick is releasing a new album. And that's another thing, you know, the bond, the fellowship. When I was younger, I would spend so much time listening to music and memorizing the lyrics that only when I was around other music lovers or actually particular, that particular um, artist's fan did a fellowship, did a bond um, develop because we might rap or we might, you know, spit the same verse, you know, in unison and if you spit the same verse in unison or if someone plays the music and you hear it and, and, and you, you recite the verses in unison, then it's like, oh, a bond was created. My man, yo, you listen to that? Oh, I know that. Yeah. Right? That was the only time that the, that the community was formed for me. So now with this Kendrick Lamar um, record and... You know, I wasn't really checking for Kendrick. You know, I, I didn't type in Google, what's Kendrick up to, Kendrick Lamar, whatever. I wasn't doing all of that. I was doing other things. But it came across my feed, and I said, let me find out. I'm excited any time a Kendrick Lamar uh, record is released. He's produced some great records. Produced meaning it is his product. Not so much he is the producer on it, you know. But um, yes, he's created some great um, music, some music that, um, oh yeah, definitely, definitely I vibe with and I can appreciate. And he pretty much um, has described the experience of, I mean, being a black man in California, period. Period. And there are some aspects that any black man can uh, relate to through Kendrick's music, so it's it's absolutely uh, valuable. So the community, the community of, you know, of, uh, of music lovers is one that, you know, I guess was secondary because the first experience I had with music was very personal. I love this song. <laughs> I can't party no more. 
<laughs> you know me, I'm an advocate for we deserve safe spaces for joy. I love when black men have children. And they are grounded in the home because it teaches them sensitivity. It, te it teaches them hope and empathy. It's so many beautiful things. Shimmy Shimmy Cocoa Puff is in the song. That is a play <laughs> in the ground rhyme. Children hope blindly. You, he talked about the light. This song to me is like this little light of mine for grown-ups. It's so wonderful because the revolution is exhausting. Murders on screen is exhausting. Captions and likes are exhausting. Multiple businesses is exhausting. Side hustles, teenage parenting, trying okay. to do your best, going to night school. Like the plight of being black in this country is fucking exhausting. Okay. <laughs> no, that's right. This track doesn't make me tired. It gives me hope. It makes me feel bright and flowery. You couldn't help but move. You're talking about the economy and how we can take over the economy through, you know, accepting our narrative as being originals. I believe the way that we do that is by embracing who we really are, which are beams of light. Yes. We don't get to be joyous. If we were able to be joyous, and going back to your other thing about when you was talking about out of pocket, I firmly disagree. We are out of pocket right now. We need to get in the pocket. This moment, these people, this party, we in the zone. We're in the pocket. We. This is how you get to the trill. It's not separate. It's, it's, it's not equal. It's not yes. It's not no. It's being present and aware. It's reaching across the table instead of only thinking you can get up by reaching upward. It reminds me of children on the playground this song when you don't know no better, when you don't know color, when you don't know hate, when you don't know enemy, when you just know you're fun to be around. And I, I thought that the first time I heard the song and when old girl hit me with the shimmy shimmy cocoa puff, I was like, yo, we taking it, because you know, I get around. We, they talking about fucking, but it's fun. It's a whole bunch of dudes. Okay. I mean, we the pool party, having fun. Sure, it's reckless fun. It's fun nonetheless. When there, there's just not enough of that for us. You know, we should be able to hold this banner and still shine bright. All right. Now, with this Kendrick Kendrick Lamar um, record, it's only been, what, now six days. It's been almost a week, right? And in that amount of time, I have watched um, a video that, a phenomenal video for uh, The Heart Part 5 that, I mean, everyone's been talking about. So the community aspect has already been there. People are talking, people are talking, people are analyzing, expressing, you know, information. So there's a there's a whole, you know, the, the, the people are talking. That's a whole experience that is new, that is different from the experience I had when I was younger, personally. Maybe it existed back then. Maybe people were talking about albums as they were being released, and I just wasn't privy to those conversations. You know, I'm just speaking my my truth. Yeah, I think that that's really powerful what you both were saying, because I think a lot of what this album is dealing with is complicated relationships between black men and black women. And so to have this moment where it's calling out the daddy issue, when, at least in my experience, a lot of times black men are talking about issues with their mothers and women with their fathers, not to be so in the binary, but that's what I hear. And um, there's something self-reflective about being able to say, I have an issue with the masculine as a masculine person. And mm -hmm. to say, I need to heal that and I need to focus on that versus being so focused on the opposite and that lack which can be just a reperpetuation of the same cycle. Mm -hmm. So I find it to be very self-reflective and I think that that's a really powerful thing that he's doing there. And then I watched the video, then the album was released. My cousin and I, you know, had our words. He said, I'm gonna listen to it. I need some time to listen to it. I said, you got it, I, I need to do the same. 
but we were on the same wavelength. Like, yo, this is what we have to do. Say, yeah, it's what we have to do. So we listened to the records, we shared information, shared messages back and forth, and so that was the that was the particip participatory aspect of the of the the listening experience. But then something new happened, whereby yesterday I joined a discussion. People met in the Mert Park to discuss the album, and I've never experienced anything like this especially within the first week of the album's release. So I'm, this is like, not overkill, but this is like, it's, it's uh, what is it? Um, our, our senses are overstimulated. There's a lot of attention on Kendrick Lamar right now. We're, we're, we're actively participating in the, in a discussion about the music. And I'm just blown away by how engaged our community is. And it was a wonderful thing to, to hear different perspectives about the music. And I'm just like, I'm really blown away by it. Now, I will say that I did not mention, I did not um, contribute to the conversation. I was, um, a particip I was a participant observer. So I was there, but I was listening mostly. And here with my video, what I'm going to do is share my thought on just one song. There's the song, let me check it out here. The song is, it's, it's that, it's that dysfunctional um, track, that toxic track um, in call, entitled uh, We Cry Together, Kendrick Lamar and Taylor Page. Here's what I wanted to say last night at that discussion. Um, I wanted to say that number one, Yes, Kendrick is a black man, and Kendrick has um, has spoken about you know black, about blackness, and we we feel a, a kinship to him because he is you know our voice, and and you know whether we like it or not, he's our voice. He's he has the platform, and I think we like it more so than not. Okay, um, but yeah, so Kendrick is shaping, um, framing these discussions, um. Kendrick addresses a dysfunctional relationship, uh, an argument between, you know, two lovers, um, a toxic um, relationship. And I wanted to say that as black people, let us not take ownership of that experience. Let us not say that Kendrick is representing us you know, in that particular song. Luckily, Kendrick did something that was profound, and he said, this is what we all sound like. When that song begins, he said, this is what everybody sounds like. And that's so profound because that's that's the point that I want to make, you know. As black people, yes, Kendrick speaks for us, but let's not take ownership of that experience because that's a dysfunction, and we don't we don't want to take ownership of that. But let's let's resonate on this idea that that experience is a human experience. Any one of us could be, could find ourselves in a very terrible um, relationship. And that's what that is, an argument between two people who find themselves in a pretty bad, you know, relationship. And so, um, yeah, let's not take ownership of that. And then the other thing is, during that conversation yesterday, that discussion, there was a gentleman who said that he had been in three relationships and none of them were ever as toxic and dysfunctional as the one depicted on Kendrick's album. And I thought of myself and I said, you know, that's so true for me as well. I've never been in a dysfunctional relationship like that and I don't want to be in a dysfunctional um, relationship like that. Well, I can't say I've never been. I, I was in a pretty bad relationship. It had its highs, but it also had its lows. And when those lows outnumbered the highs, that's when it was time to go. So I do have that. But the point that I want to, you know, underscore here is that it wasn't a... This is, this is something deep. It wasn't a black experience it, it wasn't you know it wasn't a black experience and in, in fact the relationship where I had the most trouble was not you know with the black woman 
So we'll just leave that on the table. But I'm saying that it's a human experience. And as a human, you don't want to find yourself in that type of relationship. And as black people, we don't want to take ownership of that type of dysfunction. Now, the, the last thing that I'll say is um, I don't have an example in my life of that type of dysfunction. Yes, I did have a bad relationship. That was in the past. But okay, let's speak of the present. I don't have an example of that type of dysfunction in my life, whether it's my, my mother and my father, whether it's my uh, my sister and her and my brother-in-law, whether it's between my wife and I, all right? And then we can go even further outside of my family, but I don't see dysfunction like that. So that's how I want to underscore that idea. Let's not take ownership of it. Yes, it's a human experience. And I would say, if you're in that type of relationship, please know that that is not, you know, is that is not what you deserve. You deserve more. You deserve better. Okay. And then the last thing that I wanted to say was that um, to underscore the idea that it's a human experience is I don't have an example of that in my family, but right now we we all have an example of that of that dysfunction look at the johnny depp and amber somebody look at that relationship look at that um that court case that is an example of the dysfunction that kendrick was uh, highlighting and that's not black that wasn't a, a, a black couple so anyhow you know think about that so that's what I wanted to share about that particular song um, entitled We Cry Together. Um, and then the lastly, that, you know, within the first week of the album's release, we're over here analyzing, dissecting, discussing, sharing. And it's a beautiful thing. And um, it's, a, it's a new day and age where we can do that, sit and listen and share Um you know, like that. And we should be able to do the same thing with books. You know, a group, um, a group of us, you know, get together. I mean, I guess that's what book clubs have always been about. I've never participated in a book club, per se. Also, the first line. <laughs> do you love me? Do you trust me? I mean, that's just Jimmy right there. That's one of the first times that I've heard Kate I really be like, you know what? sensitive even though i'm seen as you know to some people as a literal prophet like people who kiss the ground that i walk on i'm sensitive and what you think actually deeply affects me so we in a relationship whether or not you know it even if you're there listening on the ipod like this is a relationship and we and we kind of like still set in a comfort zone right now at this point in the album. I thought that was beautiful too. I love so I don't know. We're things are happening. Things things good things are happening. Good things are coming of this. So kudos to Kendrick Lamar for um the release of his uh, latest record. I have to say I think Rich Spirit is such a, a bouncy you know, great record, great um, song to just cool out to. But there's a message behind that as well. I'm not going to get into all of the messages and, and my analysis of it. That's not what I'm here for. It's just to share um, a, the difference between my experience with music in the past and my experience with uh, music today, um, and in particular with this uh, new Kendrick Lamar um, record. And... Um, and the fascinating journey that it's been. And also, Kendrick in his um in the song Auntie Auntie Aunt Auntie Auntie. There's so many different ways to pronounce it. Auntie Auntie. I would say Auntie Auntie, right? Auntie Diaries. He gives a shout out to DJ Quick. And to, again, to underscore my experience with music, you know, it was very personal. My whole, you know, adolescence, you know, was 
shaped by DJ Quick's music. Because I would just get a quick, I got the first quick record, which was to the chagrin, to the uh, dissatisfaction of my teacher, Mrs. Shirley Clisby at Baldwin Elementary School. She was none too happy with uh, DJ Quick's uh, music, especially with that title, with the debut album and the, not the title track, but the first track, SBP, Sweet Black, whoa, yeah, Mrs. Clisby was like, I can't believe you have that, you should not have this, and I felt like I had let Mrs. Clisby down, because she had done such a great job of, you know, building me up, teaching me about our history, a bit about blackness, about melanated beings, and about Africa, and I was just like, whoo, I'm with you, Mrs. Clisby, and then I, I returned to visit her one day, and I had DJ Quick in my pocket, and she was talking about DJ Quick's record, and I was like, and I have it in my pocket, and she was like, I'm disappointed in you. Mm -mm -mm. And I was like, but I love this music. So anyway, yeah, so Kendrick gives a shout out to um, DJ Quick in that um, record. And my experience, you know, I was just always riding with Quick, listening to all of his records. So I could just, you know, spit a quick verse. And, and in fact, in my book, 10-9, um, the first verse, I borrowed the cadence. I borrowed the 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 style the stylings of um DJ Quick Quick said a day in the life of a brother named Quick I'm just a stubborn kind of fella with the head like a brick and just because I drink the eight they say that I'm hopeless but I don't really care it's just something no but I don't really care just blame it on the lokeness I took all of that and I said a day in the life of a legend named Larry. I've got coincidences to talk about. Don't be scary. And just because I saw an omen, you might think that I'm joking. But I don't really care. It's just something that I noticed. You dig? All right, y'all. Have a blessed day. Peace. <laughs>